This is day 18 of reading Revelation. After this I heard what sounded like the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia! Salvation, glory, and might belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her harlotry. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. They said a second time, Alleluia! Smoke will rise from her for ever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. A voice coming from the throne said, Praise our God, all you his servants, and you who revere him, small and great. Then I heard something like the sound of a great multitude, or the sound of rushing water, or mighty peals of thunder, as they said, Alleluia. The Lord has established his reign, our God the Almighty. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding day of the Lamb has come. His bride has made herself ready. She was allowed to wear a bright, clean linen garment. The linen represents the righteous deeds of the holy ones. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who have been called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he said to me, These words are true. They come from God. I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't. I am a fellow servant of yours and of your brothers who bear witness to Jesus. Worship God. Witness to Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Today we have another interlude showing an image of worship in heaven. Idea of what other, another idea, perhaps, of what it might be like to stand in the presence of God. But I will remind us again to be cautious about this, because it's easy to interpret this as gloating, as the faithful celebrating their vindication over those people. I don't think that the victory of God should ever be seen as a, some sort of WWE smackdown. Rather, it's a continuing working out of God's purposes and God's plan for the perfection of the universe and for the benefit of all of humanity. So, although the, the faithful may be singing these songs, we should see them very clearly as worship of God rather than as anything that relates to us and how we feel over against those who might not agree with us. I'm interested in this image of smoke rising from Babylon. You'll know that Normally, smoke is thought of as incense, and, and that is to be the prayers of the faithful that rise to the throne of God. We've seen this already a couple of times in Revelation, where angels have been swinging censers and huge quantities of incense have been produced. So it's a good question whether this smoke is meant to be an eternal reminder of Babylon's destruction, or is it meant to be, even in destruction, the rising of the prayers of the faithful from that place or from any place to God? Because at no time and in no place is prayer ever absent or silent. So I like to think that perhaps there's a, a little bit of edge of hope in this, that in fact, when whatever was troublesome, whatever was evil in Babylon, however we define Babylon, has been wiped out. What nonetheless remains is the prayers of the faithful rising like smoke to God. Clearly, all of this is meant, as I have said already, to mean justice, not vengeance. There shouldn't be gloating over anyone's destruction. Ultimately, Everything is in the hands of God. We had no way, no part in planning or creating these things. We have no part in the, the, the victory over that which is imperfect in the world either. All of this little section ends with a wedding scene, which is, again, a curious turn of events. Normally, when we think of a wedding in heaven like this, what we are supposed to understand is the mystical marriage of Christ with the church. In this context, ju coming just after scenes of death and destruction, I think it's not unreasonable to read into it a meaning of new life, of hope, of repopulation. When something has been removed, something new can move in and take its place, and perhaps that new thing is something new and godly. 
So the wedding, I think, is intended to say destruction is never permanent. Uh, the death of sinners is never permanent. In some way, the justice and mercy of God must win over absolutely everything, and that this is some small sign of that. At the same time, I would caution you to remember what happens in some of Jesus' stories about weddings. There's one where the bridesmaids uh, wait around for the, bride to, for the bridegroom to come. Some are well-prepared and some are not. Those who are not well-prepared are not allowed to enter the wedding feast. In another story, a king holds a wedding banquet for his son, but the guests don't come, so he goes out and hauls in random people. Uh, but one of those random people doesn't have the right costume on and so is cast out of the wedding feast. So even in weddings, there is something about being well-prepared, being in the right spiritual costume that is still important. So even as we celebrate at the, the wedding banquet of Christ and the church, we should remember to be sure that we have prepared ourselves appropriately. Oh, 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 oh.